Folks, uh, today I'm going to talk about my life and also where my teachings are coming from. At least one of you asked me to discuss about my life, my relationship to my wife, and uh, in general, how I have been coping up with the enormous thing called life force around. And though some other people have not asked me this question, they all probably have been wondering, when do I get all these teachings? Whatever I've been teaching, am I getting it from, am I reading from some books? How I'm dealing with the enormous thing that I'm saying that I am, that is the eternal unknown, but still living this life. That's what I'm going to talk to you. There are a lot of interesting things that you will learn out of this video. So please listen carefully. In a nutshell, my life has been what you call Kurukshetra War in Mahabharat, in India, in Hindu culture, Hindu tradition. It has always been a battleground. And it is still a battleground. Even when I'm making this video, I've been struggling with some health issues of my wife. How am I dealing with all these things? That's what I want to talk to you. As I told you that I was born in a very poor family in Tamil Nadu, India. And uh, my parents were uneducated. They lived in a very, very small village. They had what they call their ancestral gods. I was always afraid of those gods because all those statues had a huge eyes, fearful eyes, with a sword in their hand ready to kill people. I instinctively thought at that time, this cannot be the real gods. Though I didn't know how to express it at that time, now I can express it. God cannot be punishing people if that is a real God. That's what I've been teaching now but where that idea came from is from my childhood. I went to a Catholic school and uh, in the morning before the classes begin, we all used to worship or pray in the Christian tradition. And I used to see the Christian gods, Jesus Christ, the cross, Mother Mary, Joseph, their statues, their way of prayer, praying. I never felt that those gods are different from the gods that my father has been asking me to worship. Somehow I felt that they're all one and the same. 
they are all praying for some unknown reason. I didn't know why people have been praying to God. Now I could clearly state that very clearly, but at that time I didn't know. But I realized even a very early childhood that there is something underlying all these gods and all this prayer, though I didn't know what was that. Then I said in, as I said in my earlier videos, there was this separation of certain people, so-called untouchables in my village. I could not understand at that time why people have to be treated differently. And also, I saw enormous suffering of women. I never could understand at that time why men beat their wives, but still demand food from them, sex from them, and so on, so on. When I grew up, as I said, I felt that I have to be independent somehow, because if I depend on anything, anybody, including my father, I will not be able to think freely. That idea was there in me, instinctively. When I was in my bachelor's degree, bachelor's engineering degree, in a college in Tamil Nadu, there was this anti-Hindi agitation in Tamil Nadu. That was, I believe, around 1967 or so. I was in the final year of my five-year engineering curriculum. If I felt clearly that imposing one language on another language or people talking on, on uh, talking another language was not right though I didn't know why. Then I, when I went to do my MTech at IIT Mumbai, I was exposed to the North Indian culture, the language, their way of thinking, etc. Then I realized that there is something underlying or uh, beyond there's all this linguistic cultural divisions because people different regions talk different languages. There has been fear among them, killing among them, suffering between them. So I realized that division in terms of language and race is not the right thing. At that time, I didn't have any spiritual experience. But somehow I felt that this division based on language and race is not good for humanity. 
because basically it used to hurt me. So if it hurts me, definitely other people also should be feeling the same hurt or similar hurt. I used to wonder why people hurt each other by insisting or by getting attached to their race and language. Then I went through my spiritual experience. Before I even talk about my spiritual experience, before I talk about this 31 years of this person that you have been watching or hearing. I was married and I instinctively felt that my wife and myself are one and the same. She's a graduate in economics, educated woman, but very well immersed in South Indian culture. I never, since the day that I married to her, was married to her, I never allowed anybody to hurt her. She was such an innocent person that she didn't know, even today she doesn't know, many times that other people are making fun of her. She was so innocent, she is still innocent. So, I never allowed my parents to hurt her, to separate her from me based on the culture, my parents' culture, they have been correct in their own way based on their ancestral way of living. But to me, it appeared that hurting in another life is something that I cannot allow on any grounds, whether people are using their ancestral values or their gods or whatever they learned about their gods the way that they should pray to their gods, etc., etc. Hurting is most awful thing that I used to rebel against. I could not understand at that time why in the name of gods or in the name of their ancestral cultural values, one should hurt another. So I repelled, rebelled against my father and we had several issues, several unwanted battles. Then, after my spiritual experience, first is spiritual experience, I, I used to work at IIT Mumbai. I had issues with my colleagues, my, some of my professors, not all of them, because 
I will I will stand on my ground based on my truth. Whatever I feel felt that that is the truth. I will stand against all odds. I never compromised, saying that if I live like this, my future will be at stake. My professional life will be at stake. I never thought that way. I said to myself, and still I am the same person. If I feel right, that's what I will do. No matter what, no matter how that's going to affect me. That used to give me a lot of problems in my professional life when I moved to America too. I could not understand this authority, authority of managers, higher level managers. I did not feel right if people impose on me anything any kind of authority, I always used to question. I still remember the day in India when I was doing my postgraduate degree at IIT Bombay. There was a meeting in which one of the PhD candidate was presenting his findings. The guide of the PhD guide of that person was my, at that time he was not my PhD guide, but he later happened to be one very, very respected gentleman, very nice person. People used to be very afraid of asking or expressing their opinion against what he says. But I used to ask that PhD candidate lot of questions without any fear at all. I had the same fearless attitude when I worked in United States in various corporations. I never felt that there is a hierarchy of people. To me, people are all at the same level. That's how I Felt. So clearly, my professional life has not been very smooth. A lot of battles. My wife had several health issues. Still having a lot of health issues. At one time, her doctors told that she will not live more than five years. At that time, my child was only about maybe 13, 14 years old or even younger. I had to understand the cultural difference between America and India, the Hindu way of life versus the Christian way of life or multicultural way of life in America, face to face.
bringing up a girl in a foreign culture has not been easy at all. I had to learn a lot of lessons. During all this battle ground days, I was going through all my spiritual experiences. At that time, I had no idea that I'll be teaching like this. I always think the spiritual life and this family life, worldly life are one and the same. Even now, when I talk to you, I am alone. There is a humongous, enormous energy around me. Direct me to go one way or producing situations in life where I will be deeply hurt, fearful, depressed, and so on, so on. All kinds of things that normal human being will feel. I used to ask, what is all this thing? Why it's happening? What is the difference between all my spiritual experiences and this life, the battle that I'm undergoing, uh, the life with all the problems? Whatever I learned in my life by integrating my spiritual experience in this worldly life is what I teach you. In fact, if you look, if you look at my videos, all the things that I've been talking about, the ignorances, the enormous joy of this love principle, the life principle inside human being is what I learned in my day-to-day -day life. There is one thing that I want to tell you very strongly. And that is the truth I've been saying the strength of the the power of truth is enormous. I do not have any notion of the future. I don't know what will happen tomorrow. Many of you uh, gain strength by the hope of tomorrow. But I don't have the hope of tomorrow. I live in the present. Every day when I get up in the morning and take my coffee, this enormous energy around me tells me, hits me, makes me to understand why people suffer. And out of that experience comes my videos that I've been teaching. To put it very, very clearly, I am all alone. Imagine yourself being in this world 
alone. There is nothing else in the universe but you. Along with this so-called unknown energy, what it is going to do to you tomorrow. That is a life that I lead. I understand very clearly what is this energy. I very clearly know that I'm not different from that energy that around me. I'm always one with that energy. But I am also separate from that. By being separate, I understand all your sufferings, all my sufferings. It's all the same as your sufferings. My suffering is not different from your suffering and your suffering is not my, different from my suffering. So folks, that's what you wanted me to talk about, my life. The enormous battleground so-called Kushetra war of life and the lessons that I have learned. Whatever I told you about me being the eternal unknown is the truth. Whatever I told you about this unknown so-called God, which has zero frequency, which is beyond comprehension, beyond description, beyond all religion, is the truth. The truth, even while I'm battling in this world, The division among people based on religion, race, color of the skin, country attachment, language attachment, and so on and so on. Caste in India is what is causing the issue. Nobody up there from the world of divinity came and told me that this is the reason why people are suffering. This is what I find by living, by integrating my spiritual experience of who I am and also the enormous battleground of human life. My strength comes from the truth, the honesty of who I am. No matter what happens to my life, to people around me, it's extremely difficult for you to understand the love that I have. I've been talking about that to my brothers and sisters there sons and daughters. It has been extremely difficult for them to understand the love that I have with everybody. The difference between love and attachment. That's what I want to talk to you folks. I'll talk to you on another important topic very soon.